Let us do item number 3. A particle, initially at the point 1, 4, 3, moves in the space with acceleration a of t equals 2, 2t, negative 2. Its velocity at t equals 1 is the vector 2, negative 1, negative 2. For letter A, find the position function and the velocity function. For letter B, find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration when t equals 3. And for letter C, determine the distance the object or the particle has traveled and its displacement on the interval 0 to 3. Let's start with letter A. We want R of t and V of t and we are given A of t. The first thing that we can solve here is V of t. Let us recall that A of t is equal to V prime of t. So to get V of t, we integrate A of t. We integrate component wise. So for the first component, we get 2t plus c1. For the, third, for the second, we get t squared plus an arbitrary constant c2. And for the third, we get negative 2t plus c3. To find c1, c2, and c3, we take note that, that at t equals 1, the velocity is this vector. That is v of 1 equals this vector. And since v of t is this vector function, v of 1 is equal to this vector when t equals 1. And this is equal to this when t equals 1. That is, uh, when t equals 1, we have 2 plus c1, 1 plus c2, negative 2 plus c3. So now we just equate component-wise. For the first component, we have 2 equals 2 plus, plus c1, and that gives us c1 equals 0. For the second component, we have negative 1 equals 1 plus c2, and that gives us c2 should be equal to negative 2. And for the third component, we have negative 2 equals negative 2 plus c3, and that gives us c3 equals 0. Therefore, our velocity function is this vector valued function. It's 2t, t squared minus 2, negative 2t. Now, let's find r of t. And we call that v of t equals r, r prime of t. So if we want r of t, we integrate now v of t. So we integrate component wise again since this is a vector valued function. For the first component, we have t squared plus an arbitrary constant k1. For the second, we have t cubed over 3 minus 2t plus an arbitrary constant k2. And for the third, we have negative t squared plus an arbitrary constant k3. To find k1, k2, and k3, we take note that initially the, the particle is at this point. So what does that mean? That means that r of 0 is equal to this vector. Since r of t is this vector function, r of 0 is equal to this when t equals 0. That is, r of 0 is also equal to the vector k1, k2, and k3. And clearly, this equality shows us that k1 is 1, k2 is 4, and k3 is 3. Therefore, our uh, position function is this vector function. It's t squared plus 1, t cubed over 3 minus 2t plus 4, and negative t squared plus 3. That completes letter A. Let's move on to letter B. We want to find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration when t is 3. So again, let's start with the scalar tangential. Let us recall first our velocity function. The, scale, uh, the formula for the scalar tangential function. Let's get V of 3. From here, we have the first component equals 6. The second is 3 squared minus 2, that's 9 minus 2 or 7. And the third is given by negative 6. Therefore, the magnitude of V of 3 is given by 6 squared, so that's 36, plus 49, 49, plus 36, 
that is 121 and the square root of 121 is 11. Next, let's have a of 3. So we refer to this function. So for a of 3, the first component is 2. The second is 6 and the third is negative 2. So we, we have now all, all that we need. We can solve now for a sub, two, uh, a sub t of 3, which is given by this formula. So it's the dot product of these two vectors all over 11. The dot product of these two vectors is given by 6 times 2 plus 7 times 6 plus negative 6 times negative 2. And if we simplify, we have 12 plus 42 plus 12 all over 11, and that will be 6. We have 66 over 11. So we have the scalar tangential component at t equals 3 equals 6. Next, let's find the scalar normal component of our acceleration when t equals 3. Let us recall the formula for the scalar, scalar normal component. The vector v of 3, the vector a of 3, and the magnitude of v of 3. And again, what, what we need to find is v of 3 cross a of 3. And for us to, to solve this, we need to write down this array, whose first row consists of the components of the, of the uh, vector v of 3. The second row consists of the components of the vector a of 3. For the first component, again, we ignore the first column and we are left with this array and we get the difference of the product of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. We have negative 14 minus negative 36. So we have negative 14 plus 36. We have 22. For the second component, go back to the original array, ignore the second column. We have this 2 by 2 array get the difference of the product of the anti-diagonal and the product of the diagonal. So we have negative 6 times 2 minus 6 times negative 2. Or negative 12 minus negative 12, that is 0. And lastly, for the third component, go back to this original array, ignore the third column, we have this 2 by 2 array, and we get the difference of the product of the diagonal and the product of the anti-diagonal. So we have 6 times 6, that's 36, minus 7 times 2. So we have 36 minus 14, we have 22. This is the cross product. What we need is the magnitude. So to get the magnitude, we get the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. This is equal to 2 times 22 squared or simply 22 square root of 2. Therefore, the scalar normal component when t is 3 is equal to 22 square root of 2 all over 11, which is just 2 square root of 2. Next, let's go to letter C. On this interval, we determine the distance the particle has traveled and its displacement. So let's first solve for the uh, distance. For that, we need to recall our velocity function. And let's recall the formula for the distance that is given by the integral from 0 to 3 of the magnitude of r prime of t dt. But r prime, again, is just our velocity. So we want the mag magnitude of our velocity. So the magnitude of this function so again, the magnitude is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we have this one. Let's just simplify. Expanding the squares, we have 4t squared here. Next, we have t raised to 4 minus 4t squared plus 4. And finally, we have plus 4t squared. So 4t squared will cancel out with negative 4t squared here. So we will have t raised to 4 plus 4t squared plus 4. And notice that this one is a perfect square trinomial, and that is equal to t squared plus 2 squared. So we get the square root, so we just have t squared plus 2. And we integrate this one, we get 
t cubed over over 3 plus 2t and we evaluate from 0 to 3. When t equals 3, what we have here is 27 over 3 or 9 plus 2 times 3 or 6. So we have 9 plus 6, that's 15, minus when t equals 0, this will just vanish. So we have 15. The distance is equal to 15. Now for the displacement, very simple. Let's recall our uh, position function given by this one. Then the displacement of the object from t equals 0 to t equals 3 is given by this vector. It's r of 3 minus r of 0. So let's refer to this function. When t is 3, our vector is given by the first component is 3 squared plus 1. That's 9 plus 1 or 10. The second, we have 3 cubed over 3. That's 27 over 3. That's 9 minus 6. So we have 3 plus 4, 7. And the third one, we have negative 9 plus 3 or negative 6. For the second vector, we want r of 0. So let t be 0. We simply, we simply have the vector 1, 4, 3. We get the difference. So we get the vector 9, 3, negative 9. And this is the displacement of our object or of our particle as it moves from t equals 0 to t equals 3. This completes uh, number 3. Let's move on to the last example. We have an object initially at the point 1, 4, 3, which moves in a way that its velocity at any time, t, non-negative, is given by this vector valid function. We need, we need to find the coordinates of the position of the object when t equals 1. We need to determine the velocity, speed, and acceleration at t equals 1. And finally, find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration at t equals 1. So before we try to answer this problem, I suggest that you pause this video and try to do this on your own. Come back later and we'll see if our answers are correct. So welcome back. I hope you tried solving the problem on your own. Let's see. All right, let's do letter A. We want to find the coordinates of the position when t equals 1. So what do we what do we want? We want the position of the object. So we need the position function. That is, we need r of t. Again, recall r of t or v of t is just r prime of t. So if we want r of t, we need to integrate v of t. And again, we integrate component-wise. So the integral of the first component is given by t cubed minus 2t plus c1. For the second component, we integrate this one. We get tan 4 tangent inverse t plus c2. And for the third, we integrate this one. We get t squared plus c3. And we need to find c1, c2, c3. How can we find the three variables? We use the fact that Initially, the object is at the point 1, 4, 3. So what does that mean? That means that r of 0 equals this vector. And using this fact, you'll get that c1 is 1, c2 is 4, and c3 is 3. Therefore, our position function is t cubed minus 2t plus 1, 4 tangent inverse t plus 4, and t squared plus 3. We want the coordinates when t equals 1, so let's find r of 1, and that is the vector uh, 1 minus 2 plus 1, so that's just 0. 4 tangent, tangent inverse of 1, that's 4 times pi over 4, or pi plus 4, and 1 plus 3, or 4. This is not yet the final answer because we want the coordinates of the position of the object. So the final answer is this coordinate, it's 0, pi over 4. For letter B, we want the velocity, speed, and acceleration when t is 1. For the velocity, very simple, we just want v of 1. Since we, we already have v of t, we just substitute 1 to t. So v of 1 will become 1, 2, 2. For the speed, just recall that speed is the magnitude of our velocity. So if you want the speed at t equals 1, let's get the magnitude of this vector. So you have 
square root of 1 plus 2 squared plus 2 squared plus square root of 9 will have 3. Finally, for the acceleration, recall that the acceleration is V prime of T. So we differentiate V of T component wise. For the first component, we have 60. For the second, we have negative 80 all over the square of 1 plus T squared. And for the third, we have 2. But we want A of 1. So we just let T be 1. And we get the vector 6. Negative 2, 2. And we're done with letter B. Finally, for letter C, we want to find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration when t equals 1. Uh, let's just be quick. For the scalar tangential component, let's recall the following. V of 1 is this vector. A of 1 is this vector. And the magnitude of V of 1 is 3. Thus, the scalar tangential component at t equals 1 is equal to 6 over 3, that's 2. The dot product here is 6 uh, minus 4 plus 4, so that's just 6, all over 3, which is 2. Finally, for the scalar normal component, we need the cross product. I hope you did try the problem, and you did... Find the vector 8, 10, negative 14. That should be the cross product of V of 1 and A of 1. And we want the magnitude of that vector, the 64 plus 100 plus uh, 14 squared. And if you simplify, that is just 6 square root of 10 all over 3. Or you have 2 square root of 10. Alright, so that completes our discussion. I hope you had fun learning motion in space and thank you all for listening. Goodbye.